So three years ago, I bought my dream car, an A90 Toyota Supra, and I was in love with that car. I drove it like crazy. I put almost 15,000 miles on it in just a year. And in the beginning, I thought it was the perfect car. But as you can see, I'm standing in front of you with a completely different car. This is my 2020 BMW M340i, and I've had it for two years now, which means that I sold my A90 Toyota Supra after just one year of ownership. But why did I do that? And why do I have this car now? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you all the reasons why everyone is selling their A90 Toyota Supra. Because trust me, I'm not the only one who's trading in their Supra for a car like this or for all the other cars that I'll mention in this video. So let me take you back. It was about three years ago, I was fresh out of college and I had the money to buy in my next car. My first car ever was a Subaru WRX and I love that thing. It was like a little go-kart, but it was time to upgrade and I wanted something with more power. I wanted something that was sportier, but I was still a JDM boy at heart. So in a few years ago, before the GR Yaris, the new BRZ and the new 86, and obviously the new Type R, there really wasn't a car that bridged the gap between something like a WRX STI and a Nissan GTR. And that's where the A90 Toyota Supra filled that gap. So I found one for a good price, test drove it, and drove it for about a year, tuned it, modified it, over 500 horsepower to the rear wheels. I had a Street Hunter spoiler, I had raised wheels, I did everything to that car, minus big turbo. But eventually I sold it. And the reasons that I sold it will really surprise you. So for those longtime viewers of the channel, yes, this is a remake of a video that I made about six months ago on why every Everyone is selling their A90 Toyota Supra because I think I've learned a lot from YouTube since then and I wanted to give you guys a better quality more in-depth version of that video that was longer and explained all the reasons why I actually sold my Toyota Supra and got this thing my 2020 BMW M340i that I've had for about two years now and every time someone asks me about this car they always ask me two things how long have you had it and why did you buy it and I just answered the first question for you but let me answer the second why did I buy this car if I'm being honest I never thought a JDM car would make me fall in love with BMW I mean, that kind of doesn't make any sense unless you know what exactly the A90 Toyota Supra is. The A90 Supra is pretty much just a retuned BMW Z4 with a body kit. Yes, that's literally it. It doesn't have any different components than a BMW Z4 except the body kit and interior. But that car made me fall in love with this and with BMW as a brand. Because like I said, the A90 Toyota Supra is a BMW at heart. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think over the past four or five years, we've grown to love the A90 Supra and we've grown to realize that the BMW partnership is what made that car as good as it was because you had a massively powerful BMW M performance engine inside a chassis that was something like 32 3400 pounds and most importantly something that didn't have the ugly and borderline hideous styling of newer BMW but okay I know what you came here for you want to know why I actually sold my a90 Supra well, I'm gonna break it down into the three biggest reasons why I sold that car because in reality it's a great car it's an awesome car it is a, probably one of my favorite looking cars that I've ever seen. And I just think that they made the Supra so well for what it is. And it's hard to really think of something that I hate about that car because I don't really hate anything by any means. So I'm kind of just nitpicking here, but let me start with the first one. And it's something that you probably wouldn't think of. So like most people with Supras and nowadays, most people with BMWs, I decided that I was going to modify and tune my Supra. But this car was also my daily, which meant that I daily drove a sporty two seater car with 500 horsepower to the rear wheels and 600 foot pounds of torque. And for those who don't follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is B58NY, by the way. I happen to live in New York City, but with the schedule that I had and most of the places that I was going, there were really places that I had to drive to, which meant that rain or shine or snow even, I had to get there. Whether I was going to the gym or going to work or doing anything, I had to get there. And there was a few times specifically where I had to get somewhere and I had to drive through literal feet of snow just to get there. And if you know anything about short wheelbase versus longer wheelbase cars, you know that a smaller car, the lighter it is, the harder it is to drive in the snow. Sorry guys, I keep having to switch the camera angles for wind and everything. You can probably see all the leaves flying everywhere. But the A90 Supra as a daily is a good car if you have a second car. As your primary or one and only car, it's a little bit difficult to live with. But in a nutshell, the A90 Toyota Supra, for being a rear wheel drive two-door sports car, it's a lot different than something like an F80 M3. And this kind of brings me to my second point, which is when it's tuned, it's kind of a hard car to daily. When the A90 Supra is tuned and modified, it's kind of a hard car to deal with. With. Now my car was only full bolt-ons and if you know anything about the B58 you can get bolt-ons very easily with only a little bit of money. Downpipe and an E50 tune will bring you to about 500 horsepower to the wheels. I mean I've done so many videos about doing that same thing on this car on this channel and as a matter of fact I have the exact same ECU tune on this car as I did on my A90 Supra. But the problem on the Supra is that it was rear wheel drive and not all wheel drive like this. Now before I was talking about snow, before I was talking about rain, but now I'm going to get into what it's like driving a modified 
white car in those very same conditions. And that's that it sucks. It's really, really bad. Because if you thought you would spin in a stock car, a stock 382 horsepower car, you especially spin when you have 500 horsepower and 600 foot pounds of torque. Because with the B58 engine, yes, you have over 100 more torque than horsepower. And that was the issue. It wasn't always the horsepower that got you. It was always the torque. The torque is what made me spin wet or dry every single time off the line. And daily driving a car like that at every single stoplight, I didn't want to spin my rear wheels. Because not only is it dangerous, but it attracts unwanted attention. And there's actually some times where I've gotten looked at by a cop or even pulled over for the sole reason that I accelerated too quickly. And my tires made a little noise and they thought I was trying to do a burnout and it was just annoying. But I didn't sell my Supra because of the cops. I didn't sell my Supra because it got unwanted attention. I sold the Supra because that exact same scenario would happen sometimes on the highway. Yes, because here in New York City, believe it or not, we don't have perfect roads. We actually have some of the worst roads in the entire country, which meant that every single time I hit a pothole or a bump, the traction control light would flash on my dash, and sometimes I'd even have to correct my steering just so I wouldn't slip out. What's going on, bro? Hey, you're good. Now, 600 foot-pounds of torque is a crazy number, but it's much better when you have a car that's all-wheel drive like this car is. Had I still had my Supra and my car was only rear-wheel drive, there are so many times where I would just spin and spin and spin. And especially in times like right now, where it's extremely cold outside, even though the sun is shining, it would just be so hard to grip on a car that just had basic bolt-ons. So I don't even want to know what happens to the guys who have big turbos, port injection, full E85 that are pushing crazy horsepower numbers. Now, a lot of my friends, that are right over here actually missed my Supra. They say it was one of the craziest cars that they've ever seen. And I mean, the Supra just looked way crazier compared to a car like this. Because when talking about cars that are regular traffic, that's exactly what this is. Probably not the M4 and probably not the Corvette, but this 100% is regular traffic. And that's probably the first thing that I miss about the Supra is how good it looked. Because compared to the bland looks that this has, although this does look a lot better than just a regular family sedan, I still do really miss how crazy the Supra looked and how good the performance was was even if it was hard to grip and I always spun tires. But before I get into what made me buy this car right here after selling my A90 Supra, let me tell you the third and by far the biggest reason why I sold my A90 Toyota Supra. All right, so it is now the next day. We're over here at King's Automotive in Bloomingdale, New Jersey. I'm actually getting the M340 service right now. It was just too cold yesterday to continue the video, but I wanted to talk to you about the third reason that I sold my A90 Supra. And it kind of has to do with all the amazing cars that we have right here. Now, the third reason is that when you buy your dream car, you ultimately realize that it's not not really what you expected. And I think this kind of goes with all the expectations that people have for their dream cars. I had my dream car and I drove it for a year and it kind of wasn't what I expected, but it was at the same time. It had everything that I wanted, but it also didn't have some things that I really wanted out of a car. And one of the biggest things was handling. And if you watch my videos before, you know that that's one of my gripes on my car back there. My M340 just doesn't handle as well as I wish it did. And although a Supra is a short wheelbase sports car and it was made by BMW, it still wasn't an M car. It still didn't drive like an M car by any means. My current car, my M340 still doesn't. You know, there's a saying that says never meet your heroes because you'll ultimately be disappointed. You'll be disappointed that they aren't the person that you thought they were, that they're not the person that they are on TV, on YouTube, or anywhere. They're just a regular person and sometimes they end up being worse than you thought they were. And the same kind of goes for your dream cars. If you want to buy your dream car, make sure you have another car that has all the other boxes checked already. Make sure you have a practical car, a car you can drive in the winter. Make sure you have something because trust me, only having your dream car is going to eventually make you hate your dream car because there's not everything that you can do in a sports car. Take for example the Audi R8. That's a lot of people's dream cars but I'm sure that a lot of people if they only have an Audi R8 they're gonna eventually want something else. Now most people with an R8 have the money to buy something like a truck or a sedan on the side just to have that daily car you can do anything in but as you might have heard if you watched my last video on the Supra you know that there's a lot of things that that car didn't do and during that time used car prices were insanely high so it was pretty hard for me to just go on Facebook marketplace and buy a cheap daily car because they kind of did didn't exist. And if I'm being honest, I kind of rather have a car that just does it all. A car that is not only fast and I can bring to the racetrack, but also a car that is practical, but also a car that's practical and I can drive year round. And that is almost exactly what I have with my M340. So the reality of it is, is that I bought a Supra. I realized it wasn't that practical. And yeah, you're probably saying, no, duh. Obviously a two door sports car is not practical, but it became increasingly hard to live with. And I still miss that car every single day. But I said, if I was only going to have one car, I should probably 
find a dream car that can do it all. And I tell people this all the time, if the Supra had back seats and was built on something like the 2 Series chassis, as opposed to the BMW Z4 chassis, I probably would have kept it. Because at least it would have had back seats, at least it would have been a little bit more practical, and at least I would have been able to fit an extra person in there or maybe some luggage. And I do go on a ton of road trips, so that is definitely something that was important to me. But why is everyone else selling their Supra? Is it for the same reasons that I did? The answer to that is yes and no, and here's why. Just like me and like everyone else who has a Supra, the Supra made them fall in love with BMWs. I've been saying this for years. German cars are the new JDM cars, and let me explain what that means. Back then in the 90s, you could take a JDM car, just any JDM car, put a couple of bolt-on mods on it, maybe a turbo, and make an insane amount of horsepower. I mean, maybe not something like this, but even cars like these are known to be Japanese tuner cars. But nowadays, you've got cars like this. Well, maybe not this. But cars like this and cars like this. F-Series BMWs, G-Series BMWs. You can modify them so easily with just a little bit of money. And that's something that's missing from JDM cars today. But I think the A90 Super really made a lot of guys fall in love with BMW. They fell in love with how easy it is to modify, how good they drive. Just the overall driving experience, because at the end of the day bmw calls themselves the ultimate driving machine never before did i think i would fall in love with a car like this but because i had a supra and because i fell in love with bmw today this is one of my all-time dream cars an e39 m5 that is and same with this an e46 m3 and if you look at a lot of people online who had supras in the past they're all transitioning to get a bmw m car and that's what i did not really because the m340 isn't a real m car but if you asked me when i had my supra what my dream car was i would have said my supra but now it's probably a g80 m3 because that is the ultimate version of tuning and modifying and BMW M driving experience. And like I said, I'm not the only one who sold my Supra. There are plenty of people who are doing it. And I think every single day I see more and more people doing it and more and more people transitioning to real BMW M cars. So to sum everything up, the Supra was everything that I want until I got it and it wasn't. And even though I still want to buy one again in the future, I will still say that the Supra was a very hard car to live with, at least with it being my only car. It was an extremely fun car. It was very fast, but, but with speed comes great responsibility and sometimes even problem because obviously it wasn't good in bad weather obviously it was very fast and all that torque going to only the rear wheels made it hard to drive around on the highway hitting some bumps sometimes i would feel like i was about to spin out and yes there are actually guys who have done that for just hitting a regular bump i know i'm not crazy because if you own that car you know exactly what i'm talking about and ultimately it was an amazing car but i just wish i had a daily and like i said because of used car prices during that time if you know what used car prices were like two years ago and even still today they were insane now that i have my daily maybe i'll trade it up for something better because like like I said, I still want a G80. And what made me fall in love with the G80 was the Supra. And this car, of course. But I think my next car will probably be a project car. Something that I can build here on the channel. Or maybe I'll put all three of those cars into one. The daily, the sports car, and the project car. And maybe I'll get something better, but you'll just have to subscribe and wait to see.